Hi guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be doing my F4 Fantasy preseason match review of the GWS Giants vs Gold Coast Suns game in which GWS came away pretty convincing winners. Firstly remember to like and subscribe as it's crucial for this channel to grow. I'm hoping to get to 40, 50, 60 subs in the near future so that uh, it gives me more confidence to I guess upload as well as um, give you guys the content that you guys want as there'll be more polls coming out in the future to see what the you guys the subscribers want so now if I go on here we go I've got the screen set up here and we'll change it to a for fancy score and Josh Kelly was the top scorer it was going to be Isaac Cummins but then he just sat for the last like quarter I swear it started off being, I think, Tom Green, he sat as well. So a lot of these guys, and Callahan only had 66% uh, time on ground. So you got to look at him. I just want to look quickly at disposal efficiency. Callahan, 90%. Okay, that might change my opinion on Warpool. So Josh Kelly, 107, 36 touches. 14-22, that's an alright split. You probably wanted a little bit more in favour of um, kicks, but for him, it's not that bad. Um, and yeah, he'll be a good option. Isaac Cummins at, what does he price out? 88.02, so that's around 90 average, 90.8 or something like that. He will be a good option as then he's just, yeah, he'll get a lot of marks, kicks, um, tackles. He also got a lot of handballs in this game. So that's pretty good. I have Sam Flanders at the moment in my side, and this one is one that I'm tossing up because you have the likes of... You have a couple of options. I don't like Tobin McLean because of his output in the game. He went very, very quiet. And then you have, in their practice game, you have Tanner Bruin, who now I've sort of changed my opinion than what it was like three or four days ago just because you got to realize that Bose is coming back you also have a lot of others in the midfield so he might have been getting experimental midfield time I think he will get the midfield time it's just there's gonna be other guys coming back and he only scored a 74 getting quite a lot of on ball minutes so I think there's other options there um, Flanders, as I said, yeah, pretty good output. Tom Green, pretty good output as well. 95, 34 touches, four tackles and no marks, which is quite annoying, but I think he can step it up in the, um, in the future and get those, um, get those marks that he really needs to be able to step up to that 100 point, 100 point, 105 point consistent average and not rely on getting 35 touches a game. Lucky Ash, um, 30 touches, 6 marks, no tackles, just I think he's going to be one that drops down in the actual season, but we'll wait and see. Then you got Sam Collins, who I think got rode pretty well with the 10 marks that he had, the game high, so I don't think he's much of an option. If we go over here to Collins, then you'll see here... Um, I don't think there's much of an option there. I mean, he averaged 51 and he got, what, 89. So there is upside there, but I don't think there's too much upside. Um, Callahan, 88, 66% time on ground. I think that goes up a little bit, so you pretty much cancel out the goals. And he's going to... I think he'll average probably 80 or so. So that'll be good. Lucky Whitfield... I don't think he got the ball much in the last quarter. I swear he was doing really well, and then he just didn't get the ball, which is quite... Um, how do I put this? Quite... It makes me less optimistic, I should say, about Lockie Whitfield, and I'm going to have I'm gonna wait now to his um, dual position um, comes up when he gets defender because he's playing down back and see in those first six games, can I actually rely on him to score those big, like have 80 as a basically a basement score, like the lowest score. And consistently, I'm probably going to need to see three or... Probably going to need to see four tons out of him in those six games before I get him in. McPherson, 81. Oh, Raul, consistently low. 
79, Lloyd 77, Cornelio 77 on 61 percent time on ground. So maybe he's one that I can. I wish I could get. It's a problem because I think Cornelio's almost a better suited player, but I think Taranto now looking at his preseason game, it's going to be tight between those two. It's going to be a lot tighter than I thought it would be. Constable at seventy six, that's priced. That would price him close to I believe roughly six sixty k if he got seventy six average. So that's pretty much double his price. Joel Jeffrey, 75. I don't think you can trust him to get those numbers consistently. Riccardi, he'll just get... Um, he won't do that because he's got f- four goals, one here. Jared Witts, 71. I think he did come up against a tough rock matchup in Proust and Flynn. And I do think you see 65% time on ground. That will definitely go up, especially when he when he's like basically the number one rock. Like the out and out ruck, he'll have 85, 88% time on ground. If we look here and we look at Jared Witts last year, we look at his time on ground, 83% last year. The year before that was only 71, 81, 84. So I, we can expect an increase in time on ground for Jared Witts, which will surely correlate to a better scoring output. And if... If my math is right, it should be around a third increase in points already, which is um, gets him up to that 95 range. And he had a tough matchup in Bruce, which can... You're probably scared that you can be knocked out at any point if you're going up against Bruce in anything. So he probably held back a little bit. And I think he also will have... Um, I think when two comes back into the side, it will also help Wits... Um, Perryman, Hollands did all right, but he's so overpriced because he had a couple of good games. Long did all right, but he's not going to get those big scores. Where 65, yeah. And then you have a lot of these guys, and then Harry Himmelberg, 54, playing up forward. Why couldn't they play him down back? Um, well, it, he's playing up forward because Cabman's not ready. And I haven't heard of necessarily an injury. I could be wrong. He could be injured. But I haven't heard of an injury. So it's quite weird that he's not ready to go. But he's not injured. And then just down here you have not really anything. I think you can get rid of James Sitsas from any plans. As he's just not going to be able to play I don't think. So that's my review of the GWS versus Gold Coast Suns game, which GWS ran out 45-point winners in the end, 122-77. to So this is the, I believe, third last uh, preseason game review. And then, as I said in previous videos, we'll get to uh, mid-prices of all the positions, rookies of all the positions, and then we should be basically into the season by then. And, yeah, I'll also get other player reviews out, such as probably a Rory Laird one out, because that should do well, and some other players that are popular, but also some debatable ones as, like, let me see if there's any debatable ones, such as probably maybe a Taranto or a Rosie one. A Jared Witts one would probably be interesting, and then maybe look at some other players. So yeah, that's my review done. I'll see you guys in the other videos and there'll be playlists up in the corner. Thanks guys, goodbye.